The year is 4836, and the bustling utopian city of Huashou is thriving in its prosperous era of cultivation. Suddenly, the peace of the city is interrupted as a giant frog-like creature descends and wreaks havoc. You don't get to see that every day. The Magic Squad, protectors of the city, arrive on the scene to handle the situation. Meanwhile, a carefree boy roams about the city. Zhou Yi, one of the Magic Squad members, spots the boy and saves him. He tells him to go home while he rejoins the scene. Fast forward to today. A statue of Zhou Yi, known for defeating the giant frog and saving Hua Shou, stands at the school entrance. Wang Ling, a freshman at high school, is being picked on by the senior bullies for being at Force Level 5. But a high force value magician, Sun Rong, schools them off and offers a hand to Wang Ling. Instead, he embarrasses her and leaves. Soon, a test to measure the freshman's force levels using the incarnation of the giant frog is announced. One by one, the students enter the arena to be assessed. Sun Rong comes out with a score of 2019 as the school cheers for her. It's now Wang Ling's turn. Seeing him, the frog grows worried. It's revealed that Wang Ling is the boy saved by Zhou Yi and harbors an infinite force value which he hides and he was the one who defeated the giant frog. He comes out defeating the frog with a score of infinite nines, and the school looks in amazement and doubt. It is now the first class of summoning spells. As the students attempt to summon, Sung Rong summons a skeletal beast, while Wang Ling manages to summon the frog itself. The teacher then turns the frog into a dog. As the class gathers around the dog, Wang Ling quietly leaves. As a baby, Wang Ling had birthed himself and shocked his parents. Even at a young age, he'd break up his parents' arguments through mind reading. At the age of six, he failed to hold on to his powers, causing his family to decide to keep a low profile altogether. From then on, his father took the responsibility of devising a way for Wang Ling to contain his gifted abilities, which he hoped to achieve by applying cultivation technologies to amulets. Until then, his mother insisted that Wang Ling take the golden pill regularly, which would suppress his abilities. It's like birth control with superpowers. Wang Ling is aware of his parents' worries and decides to stay ordinary. In school, Sun Rong and Chen Xiao stand for the class president election. Sun Rong attempts to bribe the students with gifts. Seeing this, Wang Ling bids five votes for five packs of dry ramen. Sun Rong then whispers an incantation of seduction to have everyone side with her. As she turns around, she discovers Wang Ling had left her the golden pill to balance the bid. During the lesson on the incantation of seduction, Wang Ling wonders if Sung Rong is aware of the golden pill and had accepted it. Otherwise, he'd also become trapped under her incantation. He gestures to Sun Rong, but she misunderstands him and takes the pill, causing her powers to drain. Sung Rong fails when called to demonstrate in class and her incantation breaks. As a result, Chen Chao wins the election. Later, Wang Ling's teacher talks to Zhou Li over the phone, describing Wang Ling's capabilities. At home, Sun Rong is frustrated over whether Wang Ling is a friend or a foe. The students bring their furnaces for a pill refining class, when Xiao brings a massive copper furnace to impress Sun Rong. However, she walks past him to Wang Ling, who notices a crush spell over her and swiftly pops it, leaving her flustered. In class, the instructor zaps through the explanation and instructs students to begin pill refining. Chen Chao's furnace explodes while Go Hao shows off his. The class is then dismissed. Once the class is vacant, Froggy 2 attempts to eat Go Hao's furnace to evolve back into his demon form, but is caught by Wang Ling. Outside, Chen Zhao runs laps, worried over his father's anger once he learns of the damage to the family's furnace. He grows weak as a devil trance takes over, inclining him to feel insecure and furious over Sung Rong's liking of Wang Ling. He stumbles off dazed. Meanwhile, Go Hao catches Wang Ling with his furnace and demands an explanation. He shoots a purple liquid at him, but it lands in Chen Chao's mouth behind him. Chen Chao collapses, and they take him to the lab to cure him with an antidote before the class resumes. Froggy 2 sneaks into the lab to swallow the furnace, but is caught again. Wang Ling and Go Hao learn about his power to control timelines, and use him to speed up the antidote process and administer it to Chen Chao. Soon, the instructor arrives, and Guo Hao attempts to stall her, but fails. She finds Guo Hao's perfect pill and Wang Ling's failed one. Guo Hao grows soft, thinking that Wang Ling had swapped to save him. Later, they repair Chen Chao's furnace, and a friendship buds between the three of them. Aw, how sweet. Sun Rong asks Wang Ling out on a date while Chen Chao sobs. Unbeknownst to her, she's the target of the Shadow Faction's assassins. They feel the strong presence of Wang Ling's power and get uncoordinated. Suddenly, Wang Ling is called by his teacher. He answers yes, which Sun Rong mistakes as acceptance. 
The assassins leave after realizing that they've lost their target and the social media bursts with the news of Wang Ling and Sung Rong dating. Wang Ling is taken to see the joint honorary master immortal Zhou Yi, who recognizes him as the gifted boy. He falls to his knees and calls him master, at which Wang Ling performs his 50% memory erase spell. On his way back, Froggy too informs him about the assassins. The next day, Wang Ling awakens from a nightmare of Sung Rong asking him out, only to find her outside his house waiting with bodyguards and limos. His parents encourage him, and soon he leaves with Sung Rong to an amusement park owned by her family. Unknown to them, the assassins have arrived again. At the park, Wang Ling causes obstructions for the assassins while performing his 50% trick to erase Sung Rong's memories. As Wang Ling and Sung Rong go on a ferris wheel, Zhou Yi watches from below. Noticing the assassins, he calls the magic squad. The assassins climb into Wang Ling and Sung Rong's ferris car, where Sung Rong recognizes them and stands as a barrier to protect Wang Ling. Though Wang Ling impressively fends the assassins off, leaving Zhou Yi on his knees in amazement. He then performs his 100% promise spell to lock the memories of the day as a secret in Sung Rong's memory instead of erasing it and sealing the night. Furious, the Shadow Faction leader issued a Shadow Kill order for Sung Rong. At school, Sung Rong catches up with Wang Ling, Chen Chao, and Guo Hua as they are briefed by their teacher about the protection order for Sun Rong. Zhou Yi claims to have intercepted the assassins yesterday, as instructed by Wang Ling. The school is put under the tight security of bodyguards, security guards, and the Seven Star Squad. Despite the measures, three of the Shadow Faction assassins, Xu Feng, Xu Ying, and Xu Jian, infiltrate the school and head towards the kids. Xu Feng is spotted on camera by Zhou Yi in the office, while the kids are too carefree and busy on their phones. Xu Ying is intercepted by the teacher and trapped, while Xu Feng is intercepted by Froggy 2, who sucks out his spiritual and life essence. Xu Jian, the strongest of the assassins, prepares with his powerful hammer and invisibility. Inside the office, Wang Ling gets a notification for his dry ramen delivery and heads out. Outside, he swiftly sees through Xu Jian's invisibility, upon which Xu Jian grows agitated. Furiously, he decides to drop everything and attack Wang Ling. He strikes Wang Ling with all his force, but his hammer is useless against Wang Ling's infinite force. Xu Jian's hammer cracks like a weak little egg against Wang Ling's head, and the assassination fails again. Gotta appreciate their effort despite always failing. Zhao Yi runs out, exclaiming the victory of his master. Wang Ling once again erases his memory and instructs him that he's the one who defeated Xu Jian. Sung Rong, Chen Xiao, and Guo Hao come out to find Wang Ling injured in Zhou Yi's arms. Wang Ling is at home, pretending to be on sick leave inside a high-tech healing machine provided by Sung Rong. She and the boys give Wang Ling a visit and bring a chicken blood injection that would fuse Sung Rong and Wang Li's spiritual forces for him to heal better. Chen Xiao reveals a spiritual testing wristband sent by their teacher for Wang Ling to take part in along with the others. Sung Rong insists on Wang Li taking the injection before, but he denies saying he's feeling much better. Chen Chao explains that this test is different from the entrance assessment. It measures the spiritual power connected outside an individual's body, a true measure of cultivation force. In another faction at Shanghai School, the students test their spiritual forces. Tong Jingze scores a striking 4,379 and leads the top 10 list of spiritual forces in the city as the students cheer for him. Meanwhile, at Wang Ling's house, Guo Hao and Sung Rong take their turn. Guo Hao scores a measly number, while Sung Rong scores a 4,015 and takes second place. Despite placing his energy in outer space, Wang Ling is detected by the wristband and ends up at the top of the list with a null score. At Songhai School, the students noticed Wang Ling's score and wonder if there's a bug in the system. Later, Wang Ling, together with Guo Hao, attempts to hack the Cultivation Council School League system, unaware that Tong Jingze is also hacking in the hopes of finding out Wang Ling's score. Guo Hao recognizes the arrogant Tong Jingze, but ends up clumsily alerting the system alarm, and both hackers quickly exit. Tong Jingze fails to find out Wang Ling's score. However, Guo Hao changes Tong Jingze's name to Tong Birdie 2 before leaving, which doesn't sit well. Due to Sung Rong and Wang Ling's scores, the average of the faction's 60s school is up. Their school is now eligible to face off against the Songhai faction's 59 school in the sword fighting competition. Tong Jingze practices at the arena, now publicly known as Tong Birdie 2, and gives an interview where he challenges Wang Ling and Sung Rong, saying that they're preparing to give their rivals a fitting competition. Back at school, Miss Pan objects to letting freshmen participate in the competition, 
but Zhou Yi charms his way in and convinces her. They also decide to include Froggy 2 to complete the team of five, who scores a hefty 5,000, surpassing Tong Jingze, who is once again humiliated, this time left behind by a dog. As the students return home and engage in their after-school activities, Wang Zakong, the teacher, creates a WeChat group. He informs Chen Chao, Sun Rong, Froggy Tu, Guo Hao, and Wang Ling about their selection for the competition. The students excitedly and proudly share their impressive swords in the group chat as the teacher encourages them. Chen shows off his massive sword given by his father, while Guo Hao shows off his. Sun Rong reveals her outstanding spirit sword, surprising everyone that she has multiples. They press Wang Ling, who has been quiet, asking if he has a sword of his own, to which he unimpressively replies with a singular text of yes. Back in Song High School, Tong Jingze, determined to beat the faction of 60 participants, suggests including a mysterious and supposedly powerful man in their team called Hei Bufeng and is granted permission. Hei Bu Feng beats up the students assigned to call him for the competition, but is curious and wonders why they need him to compete this time. Wang Ling wonders if he could let out his power a little in the competition. While looking for his sword, he goes to his parents, who are busy watching TV, when the news reports an explosion. Suddenly, breaking news flashes. Shadow Faction's headquarters have been found and are being cleared by the Immortals. Later on, Wang Ling climbs to the attic to get his spirit sword, which is a little boy. But as the sword awakens, his force suppression talisman is weakened. The next day, the students and teachers gather to leave for Faction 59. Wang Ling gets laughed at for bringing a tiny sword. Secretly, he plans to play sick and quit once he's arrived at Faction 59. As the students prepare to leave, Zhou Yi is informed regarding an issue. He arrives at the news of the Immortals, capturing the boss of the Shadow Faction. But she explodes in a blast, revealing it as just a decoy. Anyway, the real boss chuckles in her car, satisfied that she has removed the impediment between herself and her target. She follows the students to Faction 59. On the bus, Wang Ling's spirit sword has awoken, and Wang Ling bribes him with dry ramen to stay low. On arrival, these students are received by the Faction 59's team rather coldly. Their teacher, Miss Jie, who also has a rivalry with Miss Pan, evaluates Wang Ling's force value with a trick. The trick triggers Wang Ling's talisman of force suppression and causes a huge blast. Wang Ling seizes the opportunity and fails, while Sung Rong rushes to cradle him, worried. Tong Jingze wonders if it's Hei Bu Feng's work. Meanwhile, Zhou Yi has nullified Shadow Boss's blast and is well. She receives the news of her failure, but after witnessing Sun Rong's affection for Wang Ling, she leaves with a new plan in mind. Sun Rong follows Wang Ling, who's been carried inside on a stretcher, but is stopped by Tong Jingze, which leads to a taunting tussle between the two teams. Tong Jingze then mockingly guarantees Wang Ling's care. As he says this, Wang Ling mysteriously bursts into purple flames. Miss Xie reacts quickly and extinguishes it with bandages. Seeing this, Sun Rong draws out her sword, but Wang Zukong, their teacher, interferes, and Miss Xie also disciplines her students. Standing on the roof with purple flames, Hei Bu Fong witnesses the scene. At the infirmary, the medic finds an empty shroud of bandages. Wang Ling has escaped and informs his father about the talisman, who rushes to his aid. They decide to meet outside. The students arrive at the competition area where Hei Bu Fong appears and offers Sun Rong to join them as their fifth member with a rose. However, she denies it. Chen Zhao attacks, seeing Hei Bu Fong annoy Sun Rong. Hei Bu Fong possesses a powerful negative force through which he retaliates and annihilates Chen Xiao's arm. In an attempt to get outside Faction 59, Wang Ling enters the arena in time and saves Chen Xiao. He ignores Hei Bu Fong, enraging him. Hei Bu Fong punches Wang Ling, only to find him void of any force, but is surprised when Wang Ling swiftly takes his rose and passes it to Sun Rong. Unknown to the students, the shadow boss hangs from the arena ceiling, watching. Somewhere, Zhou Yi is seen realizing the Shadow Boss's location and rushing to Faction 59. Meanwhile, in Faction 59, Hei Bu Feng finds the Shadow Boss and tries to charm her. Upon turning him down, he calls her old. Hei Bu Feng soon regrets his actions. Wang Ling, who has excused himself from the team to go get his ramen delivery outside, walks into Hei Bu Feng, being beaten by the Shadow Boss. The Shadow Boss kidnaps Wang Ling and Hei Bu Feng, assigning her driver to guard them. She stomps on Wang Ling's head, which provokes his negative energy and already compromised talisman. However, the little sword boy manages to distract him by reminding him of a dry ramen discount. The boss plans to lure Sun Rong out using Wang Ling as a trap and rushes back disguised as Hei Bufang to tell the others that Wang Ling has been kidnapped. 
Hei Bu Feng tries to butter his way to freedom, but makes the mistake of underestimating the driver, a powerful spirit of infantry. Inside, the fake Hei Bu Feng brings the news. Zhou Yi deduces that the person who kidnapped Wang Ling is the attractive shadow boss, unknowingly charming the boss. Upon hearing this, Team 60 leaves, along with Sun Rong in charge of her guards. Ms. Xie advises her students to observe them in a real battle before the competition. Tong Jingze doubts Hei Bu Feng's being a decoy. Outside, Sun Rong and her guards arrive to engage in combat with the driver. Hei Bu Feng calls for help but is stomped on the floor below by the driver. Sun Rong, determined to save Wang Ling, rises to face off with the driver alone, but is soon overpowered by the Golden Cavalry. As Sun Rong is about to be defeated, Wang Ling turns back time and takes care of the driver, with Zhou Yi already present to take credit. In hopes of the competition being called off, Wang Ling leaves the real Hei Bu Feng under the care of his sword spirit. However, the Shadow Boss joins the 59's team as Hei Bu Feng. The day of the competition arrives. As teams enter the arena, Wang Ling's father finally arrives, but it's too late. He's received by Zhou Yi and informed him about the broken talisman. It's revealed at the start that Wang Ling's talisman blocks both his force and emotions. At the competition, Isabel's hacking leads Team 59 to land together at the Altar of Earth. She also finds everyone's location except Wang Ling's. Guo Hao, who lands in the same area as them, is eliminated by Tong Jingze. However, he survives because of the substitute dolls that add life to him. Team 59 then disperses to combat Team 60 while capturing the Altar of the Earth. Hei Bu Feng lands near Froggy 2 and captures the Altar of Fire, while Guo Hao follows Liang Fei, who is heading to eliminate Wang Ling at the Altar of Wood. At the Altar of Metal, Chen Chao loses to Isabel as she deploys a nervous system interfering spell, making him hurt himself. She then seizes the altar and the announcement of 59 seizure is heard across the arena. Meanwhile, at the Altar of Water, Tong Jingzhe intercepts Sung Rong and is joined by Hei Bu Feng. It is revealed that the Tong and Rong families have had rivalries with each other. Tong Jingze uses his snow blowing trick and successfully obstructs Song Rong's efforts to battle. But before Song Rong is defeated, a loud blow is heard, and Liang Fei shoots across the sky and gets eliminated. The huge impact causes the ice to break, and Song Rong escapes. Team 59 is now one man down. Tong Jingze seizes the altar of water and tells Hei Bu Feng that he doesn't know who he is, but if he supports him, he'll help him get whatever he wants after the competition. Upon capturing a fifth altar, Team 59 is awarded a speed-up bonus, but it halts as the announcement of 59's capturing of the altar of wood makes its way. In Sung Rong's earpiece, Guo Hao announces that Wang Ling has merged with Froggy 2. At the altar of wood, Guo Hao fights Liang Fei with his mouth cannon spell while Wang Ling idly sits. Seeing Wang Li sit by and do nothing, Guo Hao starts flinging insults toward him, triggering his emotions. He begins to lose control of his force, and negative energy erupts. Froggy 2, who has crept by, bites him to devour his energy, but merges with him instead, creating a spirit being that's insanely powerful. Wang Ling then slightly touches Liang Fei. It sends him flying and gets him eliminated. The members of Team 59 panic as they realize they underestimated Wang Ling. Tong Jingzhe devises a plan. He deduces that since they lost the member, they lose altars if they move to combat Team 60, and would ultimately succumb to Wang Ling. Hence, their top priority is to avoid Wang Ling and keep watch over the altars while rotating. Meanwhile, Guo Hao and Wang Ling reach Chen Shao and unite to seize the Altar of Metal. As they realize that Wang Ling has flipped the game, they rejoice and Chen Shao hugs Wang Ling, spreading a smile across his face. Outside, Wang Ling's father tears up seeing his boy smile for the first time. However, Team 50 quickly retrieves the altar and flips the score back to 4-1. to one. Sung Rong drops in and decides to put down a plan to combat Team 59 and their strategy. Wang Ling realizes he can't win the game alone with brute force. Sung Rong, together with Guo Hei, controls the waters and distracts Liang Zheng, attempting to take the Altar of Fire, while Wang Ling reaches the Altar of Water and seizes it. Fake Hei Bu Feng at the Altar of Earth chuckles as he remembers his promise to make Team 59 win and sets off to act. Hei Bu Feng approaches as Chen Chao guards the metal altar. They clash once again. At the Altar of Fire, Guo Hao and Sung Rong battle Liang Zheng for the seizure. Guo Hao throws a mouth cannon, but Liang Zheng trips, causing the cannon to fly by and hit Sun Rong away from the altar. She was about to seize. At this moment, Tong Jingzhe also arrives. Seeing Tong Jingzhe, Sun Rong is reminded of their family rivalry and refuses to lose. She tries to land a sword on the altar, but for it to be seized, she needs to be holding it and therefore fails. Tong Jingzhe mocks Sun Rong over the dire situation of Team 60. 
He had also sent Isabelle over to the Altar of Water to keep an eye on Wang Ling. At the Altar of Metal, Chen Chao does his best to avoid Hei Bu Feng's blows as advised by Sung Rong, but falls weak. He desperately tries to stop Hei Bu Feng. Guo Hao, seeing the sensitivity of the situation, decides to unleash his sword's mighty power. Sun Rong's sword spirit also combines with Guo Hao's sword spirit and creates two powerful spirits. The mighty arm spirit helps Chen Chao suppress Hei Bu Feng, while the fire phoenix spirit blows Tong Jing Ze and Liang Zheng off, giving Sun Rong victory. Tong Jing Ze realizes that Sun Rong is no longer an insecure girl. The announcement is made as Team 60 seizes the Altar of Fire. Surprisingly, at the same time, the announcement is made of Team 60 taking the Altar of Wood from Team 59 too. Team 60 is nearing victory. Seeing Team 60 triumph, all while losing to a Foundation student, Chen Chao, the Shadow Faction's boss, finally breaks through her disguise and raged. The possibility of Team 60's victory is due to Sun Rong's plan. She had told Wang Ling to separate from Froggy 2 and float over to the Altar of Wood since he would remain undetected, while Froggy 2 will remain at the Altar of Water in Wang Ling's disguise, pooling Isabel, who was keeping a watch. Sensing the obvious victory, Guo Hao heads to Chen Chao at the Altar of Metal, and Sun Rong heads toward Wang Ling. At the Altar of Wood, Wang Ling is on the brink of his negative energy breaking out. Froggy 2 senses the urgency and heads towards him. Wang Ling, from a young age, had been desensitized to the world. However, Sun Rong's light, together with the guys, had revived his emotions. Wang Ling had developed feelings for Sun Rong. Just as he's about to give up, Sun Rong appears. Wang Ling regains his control and they seize the altar together. Meanwhile, Guo Hao finds Chen Chao seriously injured. An uproar breaks out among the teachers, questioning student protection. All of a sudden, the shadow boss emerges behind Sun Rong and knocks the soul out of her body. This is the last straw for Wang Ling. Froggy 2 arrives in time and freezes time to stop Wang Ling from erupting. But he breaks through and goes all maniac on the shadow boss and continues his onslaught. Just as he's about to kill her, he remembers Sun Rong and regains consciousness, leaving the boss begging for death. Froggy 2 explains that Sun Rong is warm and breathing because he has stopped time. If it flows, Sun Rong will pass away. It's impossible to bring her back. Wang Ling mourns over Sun Rong and decides to restart the world for the sake of saving Sun Rong. Wang Ling has already restarted the world four times. Froggy 2 insists that changing the world won't change the events. Wang Ling realizes that Froggy 2 can control time and asks him to turn it back, but it would require a massive spiritual force. Wang Ling insists that he'll pay at any cost to save Sun Rong and merges with Froggy 2 to turn the time back. Wang Ling arrives at his first day of school. He goes through several similar events, but has visions of Sun Rong and moments of deja vu that confuse him. This world is different than before. It turns out that the merged forces have created a new world that is destroying the old one, which will eventually cease to exist. Meanwhile, Sun Rong enters the underworld. The god of the underworld realizes the destruction that the world will face and hence decides to send her back, and she is revived. Wang Ling's spirit sword explains everything to Sun Rong, and they decide to destroy his new world to save the old one. In the new world, Wang Ling goes to heavenly paradise and feels overwhelmingly empty. As Sun Rong makes cracks in his world, he suddenly remembers her, and she manages to destroy his world and wake him up. They are reunited. Time does turn back, bringing everyone back into the games. This time, Wang Ling knocks out the shadow boss before things spiral. Faction 60 rejoices in victory, and Sung Rong is well. She runs over to Wang Ling, but is stopped by the interviewers. Wang Ling's father finally arrives with the talisman, but he has to make a choice. He can accept the talisman and go back to having dormant emotions, or he can have a relationship with Sun Rong. He chooses world peace. I didn't expect it to get this emotional. And that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one.